Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to talk about prop movement and manipulation. So what I need to do first is add a prop into our scene so we can learn how to move and manipulate it. I'm going to go up here to my uh, props, uh, rather the set section, into the props uh, folder, into 3D blocks, and we have a simple box 001 3D primitive. I'm just going to double click that. You can also click and drag it into your scene and it'll uh, snap to each one of these uh, corners of our grid right here. You can do that as well, but I just like to double click it and it'll apply right to the scene root, which is this little uh, crosshairs right here. So the tools we're going to be covering in this in the first part of this tutorial are the select tool, which is right here. You can also use the Q hotkey. There's our movement tool. You can use the W hotkey for that. And the rotate tool, which is the E hotkey. And the scale, which is the R hotkey. So the select tool is what we have selected right now. I can select our object. You can see it. there's a yellow selection box around it. If I go to my scene manager over here, Let's just uh, move this over a little bit. You can see we have box 001. If I deselect it, deselect it, select it. You can also select it from the scene manager as well. So that's your basic selection. We'll talk about multiple selection in just a moment. Let's talk, let's go on to the move tool right now. So I'm going to go over here and select the move tool. And you can see that this gizmo pops up right here with a uh, red X, a green uh, Y, and a blue Z axis. You can remember the... Uh, R, G, B, X, Y, Z. That's how I remember the uh, axes for uh, all the different uh, arrows here. So what we can do is we can actually move our prop along any of these axes here. And you can see it slides nicely along the X and the Y axis. We can also move it along the Z axis. And notice that when I'm moving it along these axes right here, that these values over here in the transform section, those are changing. And these are relative to our scene root, which is this little uh, gizmo or this little crosshairs again right here. I can also move it along both axes at the same time. And you can see the values change right here by clicking this yellow box and so on and so forth for all the other values. And you can also just uh, zero them out by entering you know, your values in here, zero, 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 and that'll go back to the scene root. And let's zoom in a little bit. You can also use these up and down arrows to do like micro movements, which are really useful for uh, you know things like uh, small accessories and stuff. You can, you can barely see it moving, which is why I zoomed in really close there. But you can click and it'll just take you up and down by a smaller increments so you can do some you know micro movement and stuff like that as well. I'll just press zero, I'll zero that out for now. So that's really it for your movement. You can enter the values in here. Uh, you can enter the, you can use the gizmo. If you don't have your gizmo, just press the control Q hotkey and that'll bring your gizmo up and down like that. Uh, it'll toggle it on and off, I guess. Let's move on to the rotate tool now. So we have rotate over here. You can also use the E hotkey and that'll bring up a gizmo that's a little bit different. And you can move it along, you know, symmetrically along these axes that are indicated by the uh, by the lines here and if you want to go all willy-nilly you can click and drag anywhere on the circle and you can just like you know move it like this which is pretty crazy if you're a rebel you can just move it like this and then we can enter in three zero values along the rotate uh, parameter here or we can just press this reset zero out what that'll do is that resets all of the values move rotate and scale now let's press the w hotkey and go back to move and i'm going to show you a couple of hotkeys on the keyboard if I hold the Alt key and the left and right mouse button, I can move my uh, prop along the X axis. You can see it going along there right there. Holding the Alt key and up and down, we'll move it along the Y axis. If I hold the Control key and up and down, that'll move it along the Z axis. Now this works no matter which gizmo you have selected. If you have, ro if you have rotate, uh, scale, or move selected, it'll do the same thing. So Control up and down is along the Z axis there. However, if I press Control and left and right, that'll rotate along the z-axis. So you can also rotate only along the z-axis by control left and right. Now you can move uh, and rotate in larger increments by holding the shift key. So for example, if I press alt and shift and left and right, we're moving by 10 unit increments as opposed to one unit increments. You can see 25, 15, five. And if I hold control and shift and up and down, I can go eight, 18, 28, like that. And I can also control shift and left and right to rotate by 30 degree increments. So you can see the Z axis right there, 120, 150, 180, 210, and so on and so forth, and take it back down to zero. Now we also have the uh, scale tool as well, which is up here. You can also press the R hotkey and you can scale, uh, you know, along any of these axes, just like the move gizmo. So I can scale, you know, you know uniformly along all axes by using the uh, yellow hotkey or the yellow box right there. I can make a wall by, you know, com compacting it along the x-axis and stretching it out along the uh, y-axis there. So there we have ourselves a wall. And then we can go ahead and zero that back out. And that will take it back to its original shape. Now it's important to know where your pivot point is when you're moving and scaling and rotating. 
the pivot point is exactly where your gizmo is centered. So if I press the W hotkey and I move my uh, cube a little bit away from the scene root here, you can see that currently our gizmo is aligned perfectly to the axes of the scene root. Now let's go ahead and rotate this cube a little bit by pressing the E hotkey. I'm going to rotate it like this, maybe about uh, 42 degrees or something, and press the W hotkey. And I can, you know, now I can move it again a lot symmetrically along the uh, scene axis or the world axis. Or if I press the W hotkey again, then my gizmo will change to align to my actual prop. And I can move it symmetrically along this direction as well, left and right, uh, up and down, and all that stuff. And we have the same thing for the E hotkey, for the rotate gizmo. So you can also toggle these on and off by going up here to this down arrow, selecting world rotate, local rotate, and we have world move and local move. So in local move, uh, the local axis is going to be the one that's according to your prop. The world axis is according to the scene root right here. So that's just a brief explanation of the you know world versus the local axis. Let's go ahead and reset, zero this back out again, and let's talk about where your pivot point is. So currently our pivot point is, if I press the W hotkey, it's at the bottom center of my prop. And I can press the G hotkey, and you can see that's an overhead view. It's currently in the center. The F hotkey will give you a front view, and you can see it's basically at the bottom there. But what if I wanted to change the location of my pivot point? Now to demonstrate this, I'm going to bring in a different uh, prop. I'm going to bring in a uh, tire. Let's go to my content tab here, and in the props folder, we have I have a uh, iCar pack that I downloaded. There we go, iCar Body Shop, and we have a wheel. It's just a little bit easier to demonstrate here. So I'm going to click and drag in this wheel here, and I'm going to press the S hotkey, and that'll give me a uh, flat side view right here. So currently, if I press the E hotkey, I can rotate this tire around the center. So all is well and good. But say for some, for some weird reason, I wanted to rotate this tire along the bottom here. Well, I can do that by changing the pivot point. Let's go down here to pivot section. And you can see down here we have the pivot section. I can select the quick set front. And let's say we can select the bottom left here. And that'll change my pivot point to the bottom left of my wheel mesh. So now if I rotate, if I press the E hotkey and rotate, it's going to rotate around the center of that pivot point, which is pretty crazy for a wheel. But I just kind of wanted to demonstrate that for you there. And you can also manually set the pivot point by selecting Edit Pivot and pressing the W hotkey, and you can move that pivot point you know, to uh, anywhere like this. And then if you press the E hotkey, you can rotate the pivot point as well, which we're not going to worry about right now. But once you're finished setting that pivot point, just press the Edit Pivot again and make sure it's disabled, and then you rotate you know, along this uh, axis right there, which is really weird. So let's just go ahead and delete that. I just wanted to show you how you can modify the pivot point there. Let's select our scene manager, select our box, and let's press the K hotkey to get a 45 degree angle overhead view of our prop there. And the next thing I want to talk about is snapping. So this is a uh, really useful for movement. Let's go ahead and press the W hotkey for movement. And then I'm going to, and then I'm going to press control P to go into my preferences. And you can see at the top of my preferences here, I have a couple options. We have snap to grid, snap to model, and angle snap. If I select snap to grid and I move my uh, cube around, you can see that the movement, it'll snap to the grid. No matter which axis I move it along, it'll snap the pivot point to the corners of those different grids. So that's really useful, you know, for alignment purposes in some cases. But I like to use snap to model. So let's go ahead and select snap to model. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple more models into our scene. We just dock the preferences over there. Don't worry about that. Uh, let's go to our content tab. Let's go back to uh, 3D primitives here. And let's add a couple of uh, couple more 3D blocks. Let's add some random stuff like a, a block right here. Maybe we can add a, a ball over here. And maybe just go ahead and add in a different size box over here. So now we have you know three different uh, crazy objects in our scene or four different objects in our scene. And what we can do now is we have snap to model currently selected. So if I select my cube, if I move my cube along, you know, the uh, the grid right here, it'll snap as soon as it gets to another model. It'll snap right there. I can do the same thing down here. It'll snap to the side of this model. And it'll also snap, you know, to the uh, center of the uh, circle. The sphere is a little bit different because it'll, so it'll snap to the pivot point of the sphere. So now the sphere is completely en en encompassed. But if you have a mesh that's a little bit different, like this, uh, it'll kind of snap to right there. But... Uh, 
For some objects, it won't work as well as others. So with, for objects with right angles, like cubes and, and rectangles like this, it's really easy to use snap to model. And then you can also do angle snap as well. So if I selected angle snap, let's turn off snap to model right now. And I just, you know, moved over a little bit over here. And currently we have angle snap set at 45 degrees. So if I use my rotation tool, and let's go ahead and uh, undock the preferences now. If I use my rotation tool now, it's going to snap to every 45 degrees that I rotate it. So you can see snap, snap, 90 degrees. Notice the, the Z value here in the transform panel. Do, 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 270. So that's pretty cool. You know, if you're creating something that looks, you want to look symmetrical or something like that. Let's turn off uh, angle snap right now. You can also use the control E hotkey as well. I'll turn that off for now. And the last thing I'm going to show you is uh, multiple selection and alignment. So let's go ahead and try to select multiple objects in our scene. So to do that, really the easiest way is just to press the W hotkey, have your movement gizmo selected. I always like to have the movement gizmo selected and hold the control key and click another prop. Now these two cubes are selected. If we go to our scene manager, you can see we have the two boxes selected right there. We can press control and click the ball in the scene manager and that one will also be selected. We can hold control and select the uh, box 03 over here and that will be selected as well. So now we Press control and we have all of these objects selected. We can also press control and deselect the object right there. So that'll deselect the box 003. And let's move all these uh, objects, you know, closer to our original box over here. There's another way to select objects. And to demonstrate that, I'm actually going to take our sphere and we're going to move it up a little bit uh, some, somewhere over here. And let's move it a little bit further back. So we have all these different objects in our scene. It kind of looks like some futuristic kind of city or something like that. But let, let's go ahead and try and select all these objects. Now the easiest way to do that obviously is just press your select tool and you know control select from the uh, from the scene manager. You can also hold, press the top item in your scene manager up here and hold shift and select the bottom and that will select all of them. However for larger scenes it's really useful to use your select tool right here and click and drag from the top left. So clicking and dragging from the top left it's going to select everything that this selection box comes in contact with. So say for example, I just click and drag the top left and I have you know, barely any of, the, any of the meshes selected. If I just click and drag that, it's gonna select them all just like that. However, say for example, I only wanted to select this front box right here. I didn't wanna select the other ones. I couldn't do that by clicking and dragging from the top left. You can see that these two boxes still get selected. The easiest way would be to click and drag from the top right. So I can click and drag from the top right and make sure I have this box fully encompassed like this. And you can see now it will only select that box, even though my selection box was over top of the other two. So again, clicking and dragging from the top right will only select that box. Now this is a super useful tip if you have like, you know, tons and like you know 20 or 40 little you know, flowers or something in your scene and you only want to select a certain amount of them that are encompassed by your selection box. It's really useful for that. Now let's go ahead and scale these all to a bunch of a different sizes. I'm going to select this box right here, press the R hotkey, let's scale it up like this along the X axis or along the Z axis there and scale it maybe down a little bit and something like that. So we have, you know, three different, uh, just four different looking objects. I'm going to show you a really quick um, way to align these all together and that's called the Align 2 tool. So currently I have this uh, tower selected right here, this box 001. Let's just double click over here in the scene manager and call this one uh, Pillar. Now let's double let's click on this one over here and double click and call this one base. Uh, we don't have to worry about the other two. What I want to do is I want to align all these objects into like one kind of tower building. So now I have my base selected right here. What I'm going to do is align this to the center of my tower right here. So to do that, I can use my align to tool or also press the control L hotkey. If I do that, if I select it and I select my uh, tower right there, I can align it to the X, Y, and Z axes, and it's all perfectly aligned now. Currently, the pivot points are aligned, but I can also select the center. And in that case, the pivot point of my base will be aligned to the center of the mesh of the actual tower. Again, you can align it to the pivot point, which is at the bottom, or the center of the actual mesh. Let's just align it to the pivot point for now. I'll press OK. I can do the same thing for this one over here, this cube. Press Control L. And let's align this one to the uh, tower, the same tower as well, X, Y, and Z. And then maybe we can, you know, uh, scale this one a little bit shorter on this side or something like that so we have a more interesting looking tower. 
And then we can take this sphere and control L this sphere and align this sphere to the uh, X and Y axes. So we don't want it to be aligned on the Z axis because that's going to take, just take it to the bottom there. And we can just go ahead and press OK. And then we can move this up, you know, symmetrically by pressing the W hotkey to the very top of our tower. And boom. There you go. We have our futuristic uh, tower. It could be like a necromancer tower or something like that. Put a few textures on there and, uh, you know, make it interesting. And there you have your interesting tower. So that's really about it for this tutorial on prop movement and manipulation. Uh, again, if you have any questions, you can email us at developer at relusion.com or check the help files. I'll provide a link in this tutorial description to all the hotkeys that I use in this tutorial. And don't forget, we also have our forums at forum.reillusion.com where we have lots of awesome users who are really helpful and can answer a lot of your questions as well. So thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.